Hello students! Today you're going to learn about catenative verbs. Catenative are verbs that connect to other verb forms and form a chain. Thus their name, catenative or catenative, because in Latin, catena means chain. A catenative verb will link or connect to other verbs to form a chain of verbs. And in theory, this chain could have as many verbs as would make sense. In today's lesson, you'll learn about the properties of catenative verbs, the grammatical structure of a catenative verb sentence, what catenative verbs are, common catenative verbs, the lesson starts now. Catenative verbs are lexical verbs. This means they share the properties of full or main verbs. And since catenative verbs are lexical, they can be conjugated to show person, number, tense, aspect, and mood. Catenative verbs can also be used with modals. And a catenative verb can be a phrasal verb or can link to a phrasal verb. And the catenative structure can be found in both the active and passive voice. How do you form a catenative structure? A catenative verb is the verb phrase head of a finite clause, followed by the non-finite complement in the infinitive or ing form. Let's look at this sentence. Ashley expected to receive a call from her new boss. In this sentence, expected, the catenative verb, is the verb phrase head of the finite clause Ashley expected. To receive a call from her new boss is the non-finite complement in the to infinitive form. The second verb, to receive, is the direct object of the catenating verb. We considered renting a car for our road trip. Considered is the catenative verb. It links to the non-finite verb renting. In this case, you can see that it is an ing form. This is part of the non-finite complement, renting a car for a road trip. Also, a few verbs catenate with the bare infinitive or the past participle. Johnny helped start the campfire. You can see in this example, the catenative verb helped links to the bare infinitive start. Camilla got fired from her job. Oh no! In this example, got, the catenative verb, links to the past participle fired. A catenated structure consists of the main clause or finite clause followed by its verb complement, which consists of a non-finite clause. In other words, in a catenated structure, you will see a catenated verb plus a non-finite complement. This non-finite clause does not show tense. The second verb or any clause it introduces is the direct object of the catenating verb. This means that you will see a chain of at least two verbs in a catenating structure. Let's look at complex catenative verbs. The complex catenative sentence has an object interrupting the catenating verb and the second verb. Simon asked me to sing at the recital. This is an example of a complex catenative structure because the object, me, interrupts the catenated structure. Asked is the catenated verb 
and to sing is catenated or linked to ast. I promised Simon to consider his proposal. Again, this is an example of a complex catenative because Simon is interrupting the catenative verb promised and the catenated verb form to consider. The chain is broken by the direct object, Simon. <laughs> it is important to note that many linguists do not consider this structure to be true catenation since the object breaks the chain. Nevertheless, the complex catenative structure is usually taught by most teachers and you'll find it in grammar books. And if you watched the previous lesson on causative verbs, you might have asked yourself, are causative verbs catenative? And the answer is yes. yes, because the causative structure in both the active and the passive show catenation of verbs either in the simple or the true catenation or in the complex catenation. As is the case with causative verbs, a verb can have a semantic function and a syntactic structure. A causative verb can be both causative, semantic, because of its meaning, showing causation, and catenative because of its syntactic structure, one verb linking or catenating to another verb form. There will be a PDF on the website with a list of catenative verbs, but here are some of the most common catenative verbs. These are verbs that will chain or link to other verb forms. Warning, there are many sentence structures that may look like a catenating structure where there is a chain of verbs, but these are false catenatives and they are fairly easy to spot. Let's look at examples where some other grammatical structure is occurring, but might appear as a catenating structure. Some of these are modal verbs. Modal verbs are not examples of catenation. Also, auxiliary verbs with participles. Using conjunctions like and, but, or. An infinitive of purpose, which is really an adverbial phrase. and the gerund as a verbal noun. Remember to go back and review the parts of the lesson that you didn't understand. And if you have any questions, please write them down below and I'll be sure to answer them. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.